Hey, so I'm downtown Palmerston North, just had some basic blood work done, which was long overdue, and I'm heading over to Whole Grain Organics now to get a beet juice. Now, they say beets are high in iron and will help replenish the blood, but really, they're probably not that high in iron, but it is a good excuse to go have a juice. And what I'm gonna do is pick this video up again in about a week's time when I get my test results back so that I can talk you through the results. But I also wanna give you some tips for tests that you may want to get if you want to know how you're aging and if you're just concerned about overall optimizing your energy on a day-to-day -day basis and your overall health, that sort of thing. So I will see you back here in about a week's time. So about a week ago, I got my blood work done and I've got the results back now. And what I'm gonna do is talk you through my results, but I also wanted to use this video as an opportunity to give you some ideas for basic blood tests that you should be asking for if you just wanna be sure that you're aging well, but also that you're functioning optimally on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you're worried about your energy levels, your mood, and just generally feeling better overall, these are some of the tests that you would want to get. If I rush through anything, which I may well do for the sake of keeping this video shorter, make sure you hit me up in the comments of this video. I'll get back to any questions you have there. If you want me to expand on any ideas in future videos, let me know there as well. I should also let you know that I'm not going to be talking about the lipid panel and the basic blood count that your doctor often orders as part of a general blood workup. Instead, I'm going to talk about these more specific tests that you might not think to ask for yourself. So the first test I'm going to talk about is the HbA1c. This is a pretty non-controversial test. Your doctor is usually pretty happy to order this. And all this is is a measure of your blood sugar over the past couple of months. Now this is an important test because it gives you an idea of your risk for insulin resistance and diabetes. But you also want to be sure that your HbA1c is lower because having a higher HbA1c is linked to problems like heart disease, cancer, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, and overall inflammation. So it's really important that you know where you stand with this test. Now, if you're wondering about my result, my HbA1c is actually much lower than I expected it to be. It's way lower than the last time I measured actually, which is surprising because I feel that the more I switch to a plant-based diet, the more carbs I eat. And of course, you always hear about how carbs are associated with having higher blood sugar levels. So it's really cool to be able to tell you this in this video because I know so many of you are afraid of carbs that, you know, it's probably not the carbs that are a problem, as I always say. It often has to do with the quality of the carbs that you're eating. And the majority of my carbs come from whole grains, vegetables, and fruit. And plant-based diets, vegetarian diets, Mediterranean diets, these all have been linked to lower HbA1c and better blood sugar control overall. I would describe my diet as sort of a mix of all three of those. Also, I take some supplements that would probably help lower my HbA1c, things like curcumin, magnesium, and fish oil. These all help for better blood sugar management. Now, I don't take those supplements for that purpose, but it's just an added bonus of those supplements. So there's a few things that I'm doing that would lead to me having a lower HbA1c. Now, moving on to another non-controversial test, and that's ferritin. Ferritin is a measure of your body's iron stores, so how much iron your body is storing. Obviously, this is important because a lot of women have low iron, especially when they're in their menstruating years. Now, one of the things that I see quite a bit is that women will supplement with iron without actually getting their levels tested just because they're tired and they assume that tiredness is because of low iron. That's a little bit problematic because you don't want your iron levels to be too high because there are some problems associated with having too much iron as well. So I really recommend getting your doctor to test your iron. They usually have absolutely no problem doing this, especially if you are menstruating and especially if you do say, uh, you're feeling tired. In terms of my result, frustrating as always, my iron level is always really low. 
It's the curse of having a fibroid, which causes heavy periods every month, which then tank my iron levels. So it's a constant battle for me, supplementing to get them up every month. And then every time I get a period, they absolutely tank again. So constant struggle for me to get them up. Now they are higher than last time because I'm making an effort to make sure that I take my iron supplements twice a day, but I'm still coming in just below the normal range, which is, yeah, super frustrating, but not a lot I can do given that I have a fibroid wreaking havoc in my body. Let's move on to something a bit more controversial now and that's thyroid testing. So if you have a thyroid problem, if you've been down this journey, you probably know more about this than I do. But what I wanna do today is just talk you through navigating that conversation with your doctor if your thyroid test comes back a little bit out of whack. So the first thing your doctor is gonna test if they do run a thyroid test is something called TSH. Now that is what most doctors think is sort of the most important test. But unfortunately, that doesn't give us a whole picture of what's going on with your thyroid. So if that TSH comes back out of whack, you probably need to get some more testing to really fully understand what's going on with your thyroid. So other tests that you would want to get would be your free T3, your free T4, and also your thyroid antibodies. Now my thyroid levels have been out of whack over the last couple of years. I was lucky enough to get a doctor who was happy to test my thyroid antibodies last year and those were fine. That's really important to rule out Hashimoto's. But last year at the same time that I got those antibodies tested, my TSH had come back higher than it ever had before. So it was sitting at about 5.7, which is over the normal range. Now a lot of experts actually think that even the normal reference range is too high and that a more optimal TSH level would be under, usually I think it's about three. So with my levels coming in at five, you know, I was starting to get a little bit concerned and I wanted to do some more looking into it this year. And so when I approached my doctor about it, I asked her to also run the free T3 and the free T4 just so I could get an idea of where the problem was coming from. Now, I was pretty sure that the problem was linked to my lower iron because that can also affect your TSH levels. And interestingly, my iron is higher this year and my TSH levels have come back down. But I wanted to get an overall picture because in the past my T3 has been a little bit low. Now that can happen as well if you're a little bit leaner than average. You know, if you run a calorie deficit, which I actually was doing this time going into the tests and I often do anyway, so my T3 is always kind of borderline. But like I said, I wanted to get those tests done just so that I knew where it was coming from, if there was any bigger problem that I needed to address. And then the interesting thing was, when I asked my doctor for these additional tests, her response was, well, we don't do those tests because we don't understand the results. And I had to argue with her and tell her multiple times that that's okay if she doesn't understand it, although I don't think it's okay that she doesn't understand it. Like, that's like basic thyroid 101. You would expect your doctor to be able to interpret those test results. But anyway, I argued with her for a while. I had to tell her multiple times that I knew how to interpret the results, so please run the test, please run the test. And I think after about the third time, I convinced her to run the test. Anyway, my results, like I said, my TSH is a little bit better than last time, probably due to the higher iron. The T3 and the T4 are normal, although the T3's on the lower side. And what I want you to take away from this is that, you know, you might have to go in armed with a little bit of research if you're gonna ask for these additional tests. You might have to convince your doctor to actually do them for you. If you do need to do some additional thyroid testing, start on Google. There's some really great resources about getting a more full thyroid workup and that's a really good place to start so that you go in quite knowledgeable so that you can hold your own against your doctor if unfortunately you have to. Okay, moving on. Something also controversial is vitamin D. You wouldn't think vitamin D is a controversial subject. I remember when I was younger getting a vitamin D test was pretty normal. However, nowadays a lot of countries are moving away from vitamin D testing. They say that most people should supplement with vitamin D anyway. 
I find this a little bit problematic because the problem is a lot of people won't supplement with vitamin D unless they know their levels are low. And the other thing is that how do you know if your vitamin D supplements are working or if you're taking enough unless you test your levels. And the thing is vitamin D deficiency is linked to so many problems. It just seems absolutely ridiculous to me that you can't get your vitamin D tested. And in fact, I've been asking for a vitamin D test for the last couple of years and their response has always been, no, we don't test for that. Now this doctor actually told me that, oh yes, we can run that test if you don't mind paying for it. The cost was about $28. I mean, it's just ridiculous that somebody didn't tell me that a couple of years ago because I would have happily paid for it. From what I've read on the internet, this is the approach in a lot of other places as well. For example, Canada, you can get your vitamin D tested there as long as you don't mind paying the extra money for it. Now for me personally, vitamin D is really important. I have a history of low bone density in my 20s and I like to keep an eye on my levels just to make sure that I'm taking enough to support my bones. Now my levels were actually quite high. They were on the higher end of the range, but it was peak summer. I had been sitting out in the sun for 10 to 15 minutes most days in order to optimize my vitamin D levels. So it would have been a little more interesting to get this test in the middle of winter, but at least I know going into winter that my levels are quite high and as long as I supplement a bit, I can probably maintain them over the months when I'm not gonna be able to sit in the sun. Okay, and the last test I wanted to talk about, which is one that a lot of women don't think to ask for, is vitamin B12. It's a very common deficiency, and I do think it's worth getting this test if you're feeling a bit of fatigue, or if you're worried about aging well, especially in terms of your brain health, because lower levels of vitamin B12 are linked to Alzheimer's and cognitive impairment as you get older. They can also be related to neurological problems, restless legs, and especially if you don't eat a lot of animal products or if you have problems absorbing nutrients, if you have something like Crohn's, then you do wanna test your levels and make sure that they're in the optimal range. Now the optimal range for vitamin B12 is a little bit controversial because in countries like New Zealand and I think in North America, the optimal range is actually lower than in places like Europe and Japan. And in terms of the research from what I've quickly looked at, this is something I actually wanna cover more in future blog posts. You do want your levels to be on the higher side. Now in terms of my own results, my levels were pretty good kind of like normal high. They are a little bit lower than they have been in the past though and that probably is due to the fact that I don't eat very many animal products. I do supplement with a good B complex that has quite a bit of vitamin B12 in it, but it just is an indication to me that you know I do wanna keep up with my supplements so that my levels don't fall anymore. So these are just a couple of tests that I recommend you get. There are other tests I would have loved to have got like C-reactive protein and homocysteine just to get an idea of my overall inflammation levels. But this is a really good start if you're just looking to optimize how you feel and how well you're aging. A couple other things I wanted to finish off with. One, please make sure you go in and get your blood test results yourself. It's important that you start keeping an eye on these things, seeing if things are declining over time and don't rely on your doctor to tell you if something's wrong. For example, last year my thyroid, as I mentioned, was above the normal range. Nobody ever phoned to tell me that. The only reason I knew it was above the range is because I actually went in and picked up my blood test and had a look myself. If you do get your blood test back and something is at the lower end of normal or you know it's, it's kind of at the extreme of the range, you may want to do a little bit of research on Google because sometimes the optimal range is not the normal range, if that makes sense. So for example, your iron, if your iron is on the low end of normal, but you still have heavy periods and thyroid problems, then you know that's probably not an optimal level of iron for you. So don't just think because you fall in the normal range, things are all good. So I hope you found this helpful. As I said, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I will get back to you. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you do that so you catch upcoming videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.